Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Capital Area School Development Association Virtual College Fair. Uh, we're so excited to have you all here. We have some wonderful institutions here to share a little bit more about what each of them do. My name is Isabella. I'll be your facilitator for this session. Uh, but before we get started here, I do want to share a few quick housekeeping notes. Uh, this is a webinar, and so you'll be able to see our presenters today, but they're not able to see you. Your camera and microphone are off, and they'll remain off throughout the entire session. But we want to make sure you know how to ask your questions, and you can do that at any point throughout the session today. No need to save those questions until the end. Uh, but if you have a question, you'll want to go down to the Q&A button on your screen and send your questions in through the Q&A. A reminder that this session, as well as the rest of the fairs sessions, are being recorded. And so if you need to return to any of this information, you are able to do so at strivescan.com slash casta. And why? And I'll go ahead and send that in the chat here in just a moment as well. Uh, but with that, I do want to go ahead and get started here with our first institution, which is SUNY Brockport. Awesome. Thank you, Isabella. Hi, everyone. My name is Ashley Petrucci. I am one of the admissions advisors at SUNY Brockport. And I'm just pulling up my slide now. And it should be kicking off here. Uh, but like I said, I'm one of the admissions advisors at SUNY Brockport, working primarily out of the capital region, recruiting first and transfer students. Um, so as we go through and afterwards, I will be adding my contact information as well as some helpful links. Um, and everything that you see moving forward can be found on our website as a great resource. Uh, but to kick off, where exactly is Brockport? We are just outside of the city of Rochester, located within the village of Brockport. So we have a really nice color town feel to our area community uh, with everything everything from a Wegmans and a Walmart to local mom and pop places to eat and shop and hang out. Uh, our proximity to Rochester is also good not only if you want to find some things off campus to get involved with either going to malls museums, uh, anything to get in, involved with that large city feel, uh, but also for internships, for research opportunities. Uh, it's only about a 20, 30 minute drive from campus. So it's really just right up the road and you have a lot of networking opportunities uh, to get your hands on with our proximity. We are considered a medium-sized campus with just under 6,700 undergraduate students. Uh, so thinking about the college search process, one of the really big things that a lot of students will think about is the size school that they wanna go to. So keeping that in mind, at Brockport, our, our average class is about 23 students. Uh, so thinking about your math class, your science class that you have in high school, that's likely the average size room that you'll be in while you're at Brockport. And as you go through your academic program, as you become sophomore, junior, senior, those class sizes tend to shrink. And by senior year, they're likely cut in half. Another notable thing to point out is that Brockport has been ranked number one in SUNY for our student satisfaction and our student union, our library resources, and our student satisfaction within our athletic program. So our student athletes are get, getting the support and the resources they need uh, to be successful both on and off the court, field, whatever it may be. At Brockport, we do have exactly 50 majors, uh, in addition to 50 different minors that students can choose from. And what you see on the screen is just the tip of the iceberg. Uh, these happen to be the most popular programs that Brockport does offer and that students will come to us for. Um, but when you start thinking about other programs that you're interested in or adding that minor, adding a major, um, there is definitely more than what you see on the screen. Like I said, one of our best resources is our website. So if you wanted to go and learn more about a specific academic major or, or maybe even reach out to someone from that program, everything for each individual program can be found on their website. Another thing that's really important to us at Brockport is our student success. Um, so one of the ways that we do that is by creating an academic success center that has many different tools for students to use during their time at Brockport. Uh, this center houses our tutoring office, student accessibility services, as well as 
B First at B Port program. Um, all of these things help students in a variety of different areas from academic support in the classroom with our tutoring center, uh, providing accommodations to students with disabilities in the Student Accessibility Services Office. And then our B First at B Port program helps first generation students with that transition from high school to college, making sure that you have all of the supports you need in order to be successful. Uh, our Office of Equity, Diversity and Inclusion also has a very active presence on campus um, to, again, provide that support and the resources to all of our students, faculty and staff to make sure that we are creating an inclusive community for every single person on our campus. One of my biggest pieces of advice, no matter where you end up going at the end of the day, is getting involved on campus. Uh, whether that's joining a club or an organization, maybe finding an on-campus job, uh, definitely just take advantage of everything that your school has to offer. Uh, at Brockport, we do have over 130 different clubs and organizations, ranging from academic clubs to social and cultural clubs uh, and athletic clubs, as well as our NCAA athletic programs. Uh, so if you're interested in anything related to getting involved on campus. Um, like I said, take advantage of it. It's one of my biggest pieces of advice. All right, living on campus at Brockport, we do have a two year residency requirement for all of our incoming uh, first year and transfer students. Um, so if you live outside of a 30 mile radius from campus, you are required to be in the dorms for your first two years. You're guaranteed housing in the dorms for all four years if you're interested. Uh, but kind of going back to that first slide, thinking about where we are, a lot of our students will move out into the village for their junior and their senior year. Um, but for those first two years, like I said, you are on campus and you have two options in terms of the style dorm you get to live in. The first is the most traditional. It's probably what your mind goes to when you think of college housing. It's that corridor style with you and a roommate in a room and your bathroom and hall or common area down the hall that you share with the rest of the residents in your wing. And the alternative to that corridor style is a suite style. You and a roommate in one room with another room in that suite and the four of you share a private bathroom and a private common room but that is living on campus. And if you live on campus, you are also required to have a meal plan, um, all uh, which gains you access to our uh, dorm, or excuse me, to our dining halls, as well as to our different cafes that we have spread throughout campus. All right, for the application process, whether you are a current senior or if you're a junior joining us today, um, there's a lot of information both on this slide and as I've mentioned before on the website about the application process. Uh, if you are a senior this year, it is not too late to still apply for the fall semester. Um, we typically do not start enforcing our deadlines until August. Um, so whether it's January, February, March, whenever you decide to apply, we are here to help you through that process uh, as you submit an official application application and all of your official supporting documents. And if you're a junior, like I said, um, important information to have, even though it's not super pertinent right now, it's at least something to look forward to. Um, but like I said, all of this information can be found on our website. And I will also be adding some helpful links in the chat if anybody has any questions or wants to reach out. Thank you. And I'll stop sharing. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Ashley, for taking the time to share a little bit more about SUNY Brockport. Uh, from here, we'll head on over to SUNY Potsdam. All right, cool. There we go. <laughs> Sorry, I, I was uh, trying to get my screen to, to get the PowerPoint up. So, um, all right, I should be ready to share my screen. Perfect. So my name is Erin Connor and I work on the admissions office at SUNY Potsdam. Welcome. Thanks for being here tonight. Um, okay. So Potsdam is one of the smallest and oldest four-year uh, colleges within the SUNY system. We have about 3,000 undergraduate students. Uh, student faculty ratio is 11 to 1. We've been rated number one in food service at Potsdam. Um, so you're you're always going to get a great meal uh, coming to school at Potsdam. Um, our Crane School of Music and our Performing Arts Center, we have over uh, 400 arts events and performances a year. We actually do have um, 19 intercollegiate um, sports teams, as a matter of fact, it says 17 there, but um, 
indoor, we do have men's and women's indoor track and field. So that's not actually factor, factored into that number. So we do have 19. Uh, there are three other colleges and universities within a 10 mile radius. Uh, we have towards us, uh, Clarkson University, which is right in Potsdam. And then uh, down the road, down right down Route 11, we have SUNY Canton and we have um, St. Lawrence University. Um, and we are located just uh, within the shadow of the Adirondack Mountains. So a lot of opportunities uh, being in our location. Um, so we do have 51 majors, 67 minors. We have our Crane School of Music, which we're very well known for. Um, School of Arts and Sciences, which includes um, like biology, chemistry, psychology, um, political science, um, those types of majors. Um, and then our School of Education and Professional Studies obviously has education. Uh, as well as our um, community health and our exercise science programs. And then we have our Low Heat Center for Applied Learning. Um, so that um, encompasses uh, internships and service learning. We have a director of experiential education who uh, finds internship opportunities for our students, uh, student research, research and fellowships, um, study abroad programs, uh, which a lot of our students take advantage of uh, and are very popular. Uh, career services, um, so that we have um, put on workshops, uh, resume building workshops, um, help you with cover letters. Um, we um, bring back alumni to speak to current students uh, about opportunity, job opportunities, internship opportunities. Uh, our alumni base uh, is very willing to speak to current students uh, and helps current students out. Our Law Enforcement Training Institute uh, is um, a great program for anyone who wants to get into uh, law enforcement, whether it be um, customs or um, be, becoming a state trooper um, or county sheriff, anything like that. A lot of our graduates from our Law Enforcement Training Institute uh, get quickly placed um, in, a, um, in a law enforcement uh, station. Uh, we have folks down, our graduates are out in like Texas, down in New York City. Um, we have some right here locally. Uh, so definitely a lot of opportunities um, with our Law Enforcement Training Institute. Uh, so we have approximately 100 clubs and organizations, which some are listed right there. Um, lots of on-campus workshops, concerts, trips, athletic events. Um, we have our Campus Life Office um, offers, they bring in comedians, hypnotists, um, we do movies on the quad. Uh, we have, um, like I said previously, our Crane School Music and Performing Arts Center, we do a lot of, we do the opera, we do uh, musicals, plays, um, and lots of uh, recitals from our students at Crane that you can go see, um, Division Three sports. Uh, we also have a lot of intramural opportunities uh, in our, in our Maxi Hall uh, building, we have the climbing wall, ice arena, indoor pool, and our fitness center. And then as far as applying, you can apply to Potsdam via the Common App or the SUNY App. We are rolling admissions, and we are also test optional as well. Um, there's a $50 fee. Uh, we do require official high school transcript, essay, and a letter of recommendation. Um, and then once you are, once you apply, you do have a handy applicant portal that you can log into to see the, um, see your admissions decision. Um, so we do a holistic review of our students. So while academics are important, uh, we also take a look at your extracurricular activities. Do you have community service? Do you do sports? Are you um, into music, band, chorus, um, anything like that? So we take all that into consideration. Um, academic rigor, are you taking AP classes, college courses, um, anything like that. Um, we, um, we also are, uh, are transfer friendly institutions. So um, credits you have coming in, um, uh, like say you took college courses, they should be easily transferable to Potsdam. Um, we have our early college program, um, as well as uh, Bridges, we have TRIO, our EOP program. So for students who might need a little bit extra academic support or uh, financial support, we have those programs. Okay. Um, so that is, um, we have in-state residents, it's about 22,000. Um, Out-of-state's 32,000. 32, 
Um, and then of course, um, you have the FAFSA application. And as far as merit-based scholarships are concerned, um, you actually don't uh, even have to apply for those. You are just uh, eligible for those based on your academic standing. Um, so, and please be sure to connect with us on social media, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, um, and also YouTube. We have a lot of different videos you can watch to um, check out campus or just anything related to student testing. And thank you very much for um, being here tonight again, and I will put my contact information in the chat box. Stop sharing. Great. Thank you so much, Erin, for sharing a little bit more about SUNY Potsdam. Uh, next up, we have Marymount, Marymount Manhattan. Hi there. Thank you so much. Give me one second. I'll pull up my screen. All righty. Hi there. Uh, my name is John Versace, and I am an admissions counselor here at Marymount Manhattan College. Thank you so much for joining me today and getting to learn a little bit more about our school here. So Marymount Manhattan College, we are a small liberal arts school in the heart of New York City. So we are um, we're located in the Upper East Side of Manhattan. This map right here kind of gives you a nice little layout of our campus. Um, so we are a little spread out being in Manhattan. Um, so that top blue bubble is our main academic campus. So that's where all of our classes take place. That's where all of our academic buildings are in that area. And then we do have two residence halls. That second blue bubble is our first year residence hall for uh, 55th Street. That's for only first year students. It's all apartment style living. Um, so you get anywhere from four to six roommates in your first year, but you get a full on kitchen, bathroom, all of the basic necessities that you would need um, so living in, in, in an apartment in New York. And then we also have our upper class residence hall, which is in downtown Manhattan um, in Cooper Square. That one's a little bit further out, probably about a 20, 25 minute commute with six train. But when it comes to living in New York City, you're basically um, right in the heart of everything. In 20 minutes, you can be anywhere you want. You can go see a Broadway show, go to Central Park, go to Brooklyn, Queens. You really have a lot of New York City at your fingertips in that spot. Um, we do guarantee housing for all four years, but it's also really common for students that want to explore Manhattan and go to different neighborhoods or even go to different boroughs as well. So we really are have that unique institution where we really make New York City our campus and really have students really doing a wide variety of experiences and not one student doing the same thing. Um, overall in school size, we are a small institution. We are just under 1,900 undergraduate students, so really having that small close-knit community, but we attract students from all over, which is really unique. Um, so we're definitely not like a suitcase school or anything. We get students from California, Florida, Cal um, California, Texas, um, really all over the place, which really makes us have that unique campus feeling where our students are all from different places, so they all kind of have this one common ground when they arrive through our doors. Um, our average class size is about like 15 students. So we really do have that um, small close knit environment. You're really gonna get to know your professors. They're gonna really wanna get to know you as well and really be advocates for you throughout your four years here. And they really wanna make sure that you are adjusting well, making sure that you're taking advantage of the resources available to you and really offer their connections to it within their specific industries as well. When it comes to our academic programs, we have um, th over th about 32 different majors. And our five main areas of study are in the uh, natural sciences, the humanities, fine performing arts, business, and communications. So there's definitely a wide variety of things for our students to study here. And I would say it's also really rare for a Marymount student to leave here with just a major. Students are always trying their best to figure out how to pull off a double major, how to pick up a minor or two, and we completely support them through that process. Um, so whatever you really have, as long as we offer it, we're more than happy to help you through that process, making sure that you feel prepared and are set up for what you want to pursue. Um, even if you have interests that maybe don't necessarily initially match, we'll probably, we've ha probably had students do that double major. We've had students doing biology and dance to communications and business. There's definitely a lot of overlap and more than you would think. And we really do offer that um, opportunity for our students. We are also found as a liberal arts school, so we do have some gen ed courses that our students take, but that's about like one or two classes in kind of those core subject areas. And that's also to help you round out so you're not just tied down to that major, you have familiarity in a wide variety of disciplines as well. Um, kind of some things that make us unique and being like a New York City school, we definitely take advantage of that. Um, we have um, our City Edge program which is different ways that we incorporate the New York City environment into our daily classroom um, and do student life. 
some things that we some things I like to highlight are New York City seminars, which is a lot of student schools offer like that transition to college course. We kind of offer one that's like a transition to New York City course, where it takes place during your first semester here, and it counts as one of your gen eds. And basically, we have these different classes that have a lot of a field trip component. Um, so we have a history course where students learn about the immigration history in Ellis Island. And with that class, they actually get to go to um, different restaurants and getting to hear from people, um, immigrants that immigrate to the States and really getting to know about their experiences um, to different um, uh, natural science courses that go to different parks and really coming up how to come up with a green city. So it's definitely a wide variety of things and really getting that field trip component. Um, we encourage internships a lot. Being in New York, internships are very easily accessible. So our average student typically walks away with about two internships, and you can do up to five internships that count for, as credit. And you can start doing that as early as your sophomore year. So we really do encourage our students to get the hands-on experience. And we do a lot of stuff, even as your first year student, to kind of help prep you for that, whether it be start doing your resumes, cover letters, going over um, networking opportunities. We bring a lot of people on campus. Um, almost people in every industry can really find a position in, New in Manhattan. So we've had students doing internships to the New York Times, to VH1, CBS, HBO, Google, Goldman Sachs, really all different industries. We really are getting our students in the door and getting the hands-on experience really early so that once they graduate, they're set up for success really well there. Um, real quick in regards to our application process, things to kind of consider. Um, we um, have free admission deadlines. Um, we have early decision, which is November 1st, early action, which is December 1st, and then our regular decision for us is rolling. So there um, is no specific deadline for us uh, on the rolling basis. Um, there is no preference really what works best for you. If you want to commit to us early or if you have to take your time and go through different processes, that's perfectly fine. Um, and with that, we have um, our different thing, uh, things that we're looking at is your transcript, grades. Um, we are test optional through the SAT and ACT, so feel free. You don't have to submit that over to us. And then just real quick, this is the last part of mine. Uh, just a tuition and aid, or just overall, if you're doing room and board, it's just under $57,000. And we have merit-based scholarships that range up to $18,000 per year. And this is um, in my contact information, so feel free to just note that down. And also we have our fee waiver code if you are a current senior um, and you'd like to apply to us um, this year. But thank you so much for having me and I hope you have a great night. Thanks, John, for sharing a little bit more about Marymount Manhattan College. Uh, next up, we have Sudi Cortland. Hi everyone, and thank you for having me. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen. So right now you should be seeing the Cortland logo. So my name is Kim Marmorowski and I'm here from SUNY Cortland. Um, I do have quite a lot of information, so I'm going to try and get you as much info as possible. But if you do have any questions after the fact, please feel free to reach out. I will put my contact info into the chat. Here at Cortland, we're a medium-sized public university. Um, we do have about 6,300 undergraduates that attend Cortland. We do enroll about 1,250 first-year students and 500 transfers each year. Our average class size is about 23, with a 15 to 1 student to faculty ratio. For those of you who aren't aware of where Cortland is located, we are right in central New York. We have about, um, we're about 45 minutes from Syracuse, Ithaca, and Binghamton, and then about three hours from Albany in the Hudson Valley area. We have students represented from 33 different states and 54 different countries. A really cool feature about Portland is we also ranked number one for campus safety in New York State. A big component of that is the fact that we do have our university police located right on campus in Whitaker Hall. We also have our residence halls that are locked 24 seven and the only way to gain access to those is if you live in that specific building. And then in addition to that, we also have our blue light system. So again, really awesome components to keeping our campus safe. Here at Kirtland, we have 68 different majors, all of which you can see here right on the slide. Some of the more popular programs do include physical education, early childhood, childhood education, exercise science, business, and then sport management and so on. We also have some advisement paths such as pre-law, pre-medicine, pre-physical therapy, and some additional ones. We have an honors program and then the EOP program. All of these majors that you're also seeing right here on, our, on the screen, you can actually check out on our website if you go to the website, you're going to get a ton more information, as well as if you select detailed program information, 
you'll actually see the whole course curriculum for that major. You can click on the different classes, get some additional info information, um, and you can also see the course objectives for those courses. In addition to those majors that we have at Cortland, we do have nearly 80 different opportunities for student clubs here. Again, if you head to that link right at the bottom, you're gonna get a ton more information, but these clubs range from academic clubs to art clubs to cultural clubs. We also have Greek life here, so sororities, fraternities. And one of the really cool features about these clubs are that you can join as many as you can, um, as many as you're interested in. And then in addition to that, if you do not have a specific club that you're passionate about, and that you want to bring to our campus, you can work with our student government and start to kind of recruit other students and get that club here on our campus. So for all of our students, we do have a two year requirement to live on campus unless you live within 50 miles of SUNY Portland's campus. We house approximately 3,300 students across 17 different residence halls. These residence halls do range from our standard low rise buildings to high rise. We have some hybrid buildings. We have West Campus apartments. You also have a leadership house, so a lot of different options. Most of our first year students will live in a low rise building, and then we have some additional options for our transfer students. That said, some of these buildings, if you want to check them out, you head to that head to the website. All of our buildings do have photos, and some of them also have walkthrough video tours. So those specific buildings are going to be Alger Hall, Glass Tower Hall, and then also Fitzgerald Hall. So you can actually see a video walkthrough of the building. For our first year students, we will place them in housing. With that said, we do offer a housing preference form as well for our transfer students. You can request a roommate, you can request a style housing, but our residence life and housing will actually place you in your building. For any student who lives on campus, you do have to have a meal plan. We have 11 different campus dining locations on our campus, including two all you care to eat facilities. And then we also have campus parking available for all of our students. That said, it is first come, first serve, so you'll definitely want to get a parking pass. For those of you interested in athletics, we do have 25 different uh, NCAA Division III teams. For those of you who are interested in athletics but not quite at that level and you still want to participate, we have 36 different sport clubs. And then for the fun side, we have 32 different intramural opportunities. In addition to that, we do have our Student Life Center on campus. Um, we see about 2,500 student uh, people using that specific facility every day. That facility is a state-of-the-art facility. It has um, two, two floors of fitness, fit, fitness facility op like opportunities. It has a swimming pool, a hot tub, a bouldering wall, a golf simulator. So if you haven't seen it, definitely check it out. And then something I definitely want to mention is the fact that our career service office does put together a graduate outcomes report each year. Definitely something I'd recommend checking out if you are going into your senior year or if you are a senior and you're interested in looking at a college. Um, so at Cortland, what this does, this graduate outcomes report is categorized by academic major and it tells you specifically, specifically what our most recent graduates are doing. So it also highlights that 98% of our most recent grads are employed or pursuing a graduate degree within a year of graduating from Cortland. And then the last piece of information I want to give you today is just some general first year admissions criteria and what we look for. So we do require in either the Common App or the SUNY App to be submitted. With that, we do look for the high school transcript with the essay for, through one of those applications and then a letter of recommendations. Sometimes we might reach out and request some additional information. When we're looking at your application for the specific coursework we look for, it's about four years of English and social studies, and then about three to four years of math, science, and foreign language. The mid 50% of, of the GPA that we accept is about an 86 to 92 unweighted, and we were test optional for this upcoming application process. So again, if you have any questions, please feel free to contact me. I will throw ahead, go ahead and throw my uh, information right into the chat box. Thank you so much for having me. Um, and again, thank you. Um, great. Thank you so much, Kim. It's wonderful to hear a little bit more about SUNY Cortland. Uh, next up, we have SUNY College at Oneonta. Oh, here I am. Okay, let's share the screen. You think I would be used to it by now? All right, can we all see my uh, PowerPoint here? All right, 
So uh, thank you again for uh, coming to this session and for uh, attending this event. Uh, my name is Jim Lethbridge. I'm an admissions counselor at SUNY Oneonta, uh, and I'm happy to be able to share some information about my school with you. Uh, like everyone else, I'll drop my details uh, in the chat box as well. I'm going to try and blow through a lot of information here. So if there are any questions, feel free to please get in touch. Um, so SUNY Oneonta. Um, we are a, a medium-sized college, so just over 5,400 students uh, in attendance. Uh, we are primarily residential, so over 50% of our students do live on campus. We have 56 academic majors, um, and we have a ton of minors as well. Um, we are a liberal arts institution, but we cover a lot of different programs. So we have kind of standard liberal arts programs, but we also have niche programs like... Uh, you know, occupational therapy, exercise science, uh, music industry. Um, so whether you want to study broadly, you want to study specifically, we've got really what you need. Um, student to faculty ratio is 19 to one, average class size is 21. So you'll have a lot of opportunities, not only to get to know your peers very well, um, to get to know, uh, to, to collaborate and to work on projects together and have a really lively discussion in class. You also have a lot of access to your professors for getting extra help, for networking opportunities, and for just getting any help you need in, in the educational process as well. Uh, first year class this past year was just under a thousand. It's usually a little bit typical. Um, so that's kind of what you can expect. Um, here is a whole list of our majors. I'm obviously not going to spend all my time reading through them. As I said, we have standard kind of liberal arts majors, English, sociology, anthropology, biology, uh, but we also have our niche programs. Um, we also have cooperative programs where we partner with other institutions uh, in New York State to offer uh, specialized programs. So we have a a fashion program where we partner with FIT, so Fashion Institute of Technology, New York City, where students can come to Oneonta for three years, study fashion industry, and then uh, spend one year in the city. At the end of the four years, graduate with a bachelor's degree and an associate's degree, one from Oneonta and one from uh, FIT. Uh, we also have pre-professional advisement programs. Um, so these are programs in which you're assigned a specific advisor uh, in addition to your regular academic advisor to make sure that you are taking classes and, and making progress that's going to prepare you for graduate study in a particular field. So we have pre-health options for that. We also have a pre-law program. So in those cases, you'll be working with an advisor who's going to make sure that the classes you're taking at the undergraduate level are going to be the kinds of classes that uh, graduate institutions are expecting to see on your application. Um, they can help you out with the entire process. Uh, we also have uh, quite a number of academic supports services. So we really do believe here at Oneonta that uh, success in your education and in uh, your life beyond education goes way beyond just the classroom and the information you're getting, the things you're learning. And so we have a, a very robust support structure available for you. So we have academic advisement who not only helps you just pick which classes you're going to take uh, every semester, but they can also help you with figuring out what should I major in if I want to work in this job? Or maybe the opposite, right? I, I want to work this job. What would be the best major for me? Um, so they can help you navigate that. Um, we also have our Student Learning Center. So Student Learning Center is a tutoring center on campus. We do have peer tutors in particular classes and disciplines available for you. Um, so the cool thing about the peer tutors is the, the, these are other students who have taken the exact same class that you have taken. So if you need help, say, with Bio 101, you can go in there and say, hey, I need help with this. And someone who has taken Bio 101 at Oneonta will be there to help you. And in many cases, because of the student to faculty ratio, that student who's gonna be helping you with that uh, will have taken that exact same class with the same professor. So it's gonna be very familiar with the expectations, uh, but also the content of the class. Um, we also have a Accessibility Resources Center. So Accessibility Resources is responsible for making sure that all of the students uh, at Oneonta have equal access to everything we have to offer. So if you need any accommodations, uh, if you needed extra time on exams, if you need a quiet study space or a quiet testing place, we can do that for you. Uh, even things like 
you know, you have an injury and suddenly the third floor class is no longer as convenient as it was before. Um, they can help you navigate that entire process. They also have people in that office who can help you get those types of accommodations, help you fill out any type of paperwork. They can really advocate for you and, and really are just in, uh, really just on fire about making sure that everyone has access to what we have to offer. Um, so we also have a, a, an emphasis on what we call experiential learning experiences. So as you can see by the statistics there, so 75% of our students will have had two of these experiential learning experiences. This is just learning that happens outside the classroom, whether it be going to a conference or going to do service learning or doing field work. Um, it also applies to study abroad. So we run 12 study abroad programs right through SUNY Oneonta, but because we're part of the SUNY system, uh, students have access to over a thousand study abroad programs um, every given year. Uh, we also have a dedicated office to study abroad on campus. They can help you find programs based on your academic interest, based on where you wanna go, um, et cetera. I am talking way too much. Um, so um, cost and financial aid, This is uh, these are the numbers. So uh, the most important thing that I want to show you here, though, is that our room rate is locked in. So uh, if whatever the, the price is when you start, that's the same exact price you pay for the entire four years. We have scholarships. You don't have to apply for them separately. We get that right off your application. Um, deadlines, November 15th for early action. We already passed that, so it's not important. Just get us your application whenever you get it, and we'll make it work for you. Um, and thank you. And again, any questions, I'll drop my details in the chat, and uh, I look forward to hearing from you. And thank you for listening to me, and thank you all for having me be a part of this session. Absolutely, and thank you, Jim, for taking the time to share a little bit more about SUNY College Oneonta. Um, appreciate it. And so last, but certainly not least, uh, in today's session, we have Dominican College. There we go. Good evening, everybody. Thanks so much for joining us and me here tonight. I appreciate it. Um, I'm Joette York. I am the Assistant Director for Freshman Admissions at Dominican College, as well as being a freshman counselor, of course. Um, so I just wanted to tell you a little bit about our school this evening. Pull up the PowerPoint. Okay. Can everyone see this? I'm not sure what's going on. Um, it is. Give it a moment to load. <laughs> Okay, I think it's there, but my audio is breaking up on this end, so I apologize. Um, we can definitely hear you. <laughs> okay, and can you see the PowerPoint or no? I see your PowerPoint, but not in like the presenter view. Oh, okay, yeah, like it's on one of my screens, it looks fine, and the other, it does not. So I apologize. I'm just going to go with what is there. Um, we're back to modern technology after our break. So, um, so basically Dominican is a small uh, college uh, about 17 miles north of New York City. Um, we are in the suburbs of Rockland County. Here's a bird's eye view of our athletic building and one of our main parts of campus. Okay. As I mentioned, we are 17 miles north of New York City. Um, our enrollments as of right now up for undergrad is a little over 1,500 students. With graduate students, it is a bit more. It's about 1,800. We have a student-faculty ratio of 15 to 1. Um, actually, with COVID, it's sort of heading towards a 13 to 1 direction in person at the moment. Um, we are a Division II athletic school, even though we are a small college, which is really impressive. Um, Baseball especially is our biggest and um, highest recruited sport where we recruit and um, we have a huge team for a small school. Um, our campus is 64 acres. We are spread out amongst a semi-main road in Rockland County here in Orangeburg. And another little highlight is 100% of our first time full-time incoming freshmen do receive some kind of financial aid. And we also have very generous scholarships available for various academic levels. Um, we have over 30 undergraduate majors. Um, our strongest and biggest is nursing. 
that has been for quite a while, even though we were founded as an education school for the Sisters of St. Dominic many years ago, back in the 1950s. Um, but nursing is our strongest and most popular major, um, followed by business, education, and now criminal justice has also popped in there in our top four. Um, so we actually have really great connections in the local community, as well as New York City, to do clinical placements for nursing, internships for business. Um, you'll see in a little bit, there's a slide about internships. Um, we actually are around the corner from the local police department. So they do come in to give career day talks and do recruitment with us. As far as um, that, forensic psychology has become very popular here too. So we have students that are majoring in criminal justice, minoring in psych, vice versa. So that's something that we see really booming in this area at the moment. Uh, again, see we have some, our health sciences are very strong. We have pre-athletic training, pre-PT, pre-OT. We also have straight up biology, pre-med biology. Um, oh, also to note for criminal justice, um, some students also, we do have pre-law, they'll pair that with pre-law or sometimes politics as well. So those are all starting to show some growth for our students as far as their majors go. As far as internship goes, um, many majors, uh, students are eligible for internship as early as sophomore year for credit. So they can get out in the field, see if they like that major, if they need to change or adjust anything, they can. Um, so, <clears throat> excuse me, um, many of our local internships are with decently big companies like Mercedes-Benz, Merrill Lynch. Um, we have um, students who've interned with the New York Mets. <coughs> Pardon me. We have a local baseball uh, minor league stadium nearby, the Rock of Boulders. We're very close to Pfizer, we're the next town over from Pfizer. Huge booming thing right now with COVID. Um, we have over 30 clubs and organizations as well. So if students want to get involved, they can, obviously. Um, if there is a club that we don't have that students are interested in, they can go to our student activities board and request that. Especially again, being a small college, we can hopefully accommodate students in that capacity because they can get a lot of individual attention being our small size. Um, so some examples of clubs, we have academic clubs for all the departments. We have three different dance teams. We have intramural sports. Um, we have campus ministry as far as and different service clubs go. Um, we just actually implemented a new rowing team this year. Um, they are not division two yet, but they are hoping to go in that direction. So as of right now, it is simply a club, but it is gaining in popularity already this, this first semester that it's been available. Uh, again, we are division two athletics. We have 17 different teams. Um, the only difference being women have volleyball, men do not. Um, but we do, again, golf is something fairly new over the years and it's booming in popularity as well, as along with tennis. Those are really becoming um, some big sports for us as well. As I mentioned, baseball is a huge deal here. Um, we actually are breaking ground this year for a new track and turf field. So it's good news for lacrosse and soccer. Um, and again, being division two, there's a lot of support of the sports teams. Um, so students like to go see a baseball game, basketball game, stuff like that. So it's, um, it's really fun to either be an athlete or go and watch our teams play. Okay. So this year's, um, actually this year's tuition and fees is going up a little bit from this. I just got word not too long ago that our board voted um, to raise tuition and room board a little bit. So the actual room and board is about, is going to be about 44,000 total. Um, but our overall financial aid package, the average is about 26,000. So that's really good news that students can um, you know, take advantage of that, um, you know, that package and that price. Our scholarships, our average GPA is about a 3.0. We look for 2.5 and higher. Um, so any student coming in is eligible for some kind of scholarship. Uh, as far as applying, we are rolling admissions. So you can basically apply right up until the fall semester. However, we encourage our students to get everything done earlier by midsummer at the, at the latest we encourage, just because that way you can have your financial aid set, room and board set, um, registration, of course. Um, and we are on Common App as well as you can apply through our website. 
right now we do have a waiver code. It's wave UG, as you see listed in number two there on the slide. Um, so all you really need to do right now is send us your transcript. We are test optional. We do encourage essays and letters of recommendation, especially that Common App usually has those included anyway. Um, so that is something to uh, keep in mind. Okay. And this is me right here. So if, and my contact info will also be in the chat. So if you have any questions after today, please do get in touch. Um, we are on social media, as you can see, uh, Facebook, Twitter, uh, Instagram, um, and also something to note, our next open house is coming up February 5th. So if there are any students that want to visit the campus, um, you can go through our website at dc.edu and sign up to attend that as well, register for that event. Um, another thing I should add also, actually, I just thought- And actually, now. we we- I'm so sorry. We are actually out of out of time for your presentation, so we do need to go ahead and, and, and move forward um, right. as a group. So um, no the, uh, contact info is going in the chat, so keep an eye yes. out for that as well. Um, but we are almost out of time as a group here today. So at this point, I'd like to invite all of our college representatives to return on screen. We have time for a very quick lightning round question, and we'll go ahead and have our reps answer in the order in, in which they just presented. Uh, so the question for all of you will be, what's one fun fact or tradition related to your institution? And SUNY Brockport, yeah, you, you kicked this off. So we'll go yep, ahead and there have you, go. you start us off here too. <laughs> Finding my <laughs> unmute button there. It's a... Uh crazy what a couple of weeks can do. Um, but so one tradition I would say uh, that is one of my favorites, and I'm actually a Brockport alum myself, um, is the very beginning of your first semester on campus is everyone gets together to take a B selfie with Ellsworth, who is our campus mascot. Um, so that's something that is then used in publications throughout uh, all of the following years. So you can look back and say, hey, that's me. I'm advertising my school. Um, but it's a fun, quirky tradition. Uh, and there's a lot of those that happen on campus that you get to take advantage of, not only in your first semester, but as you go through all four of your years. Oh, Aaron at SUNY Potsdam again. So one event that we have um, every year on campus at Potsdam in the spring semester, uh, usually at the end of April and in in, into the beginning of May, is what we like to call our local arts festival. So it highlights the arts on campus. Um, and uh, so the Crane School Music, as well as our art department, performing arts department. Um, we have a lot of events um, like uh, musical events, we have um, showcased our students' artwork. Uh, so it's really fun, um, the, commu the Potsdam community, surrounding community, as well as campus community comes out for that. Uh, so it's really a lot of fun. Um, it's a great time to uh, get out and enjoy some of the activities that we have going on on campus. Uh, for Mary Melvin Hunt College, I would say my favorite is Apple Fest, where it's uh, the first week that you're here as a student. We basically have a, we close down our main street. So we close down our street in Manhattan. We bring out food trucks, food, music, and games. Um, it's a big welcoming event and also has all of our clubs and organizations are present. So it's a really great way um, for our students to kind of see everything that we have to offer and kind of get involved to start making Marymount their home. Kim here from Cortland. Um, so my favorite tradition at Cortland is going to be um, Cortica. It is a, a football game that every November our team, our football team plays against Ithaca's football team. Students get so excited, they get decked out in red and, and they're wearing their colors, they're super proud to be Cortland students. Um, this upcoming year, actually in 2022, this specific game will be played at the iconic Yankee Stadium. So that's a really cool fun fact um, and definitely one of my favorite traditions. All right, I think I'm next. Uh, if I'm not, I'm just gonna go anyway. Um, so uh, I'm Jim again from SUNY Oneonta. So the coolest thing I think, um, the tradition we have is called Pass Through the Pillars. So uh, SUNY Oneonta was founded in like 1896 and the original buildings burned down except for two pillars that we still have on campus. Um, and every year we welcome our freshman class to walk down through the hill through the pillars to kind of signify them coming into campus and being part of the community. And then four years later, when they graduate, they do the opposite. They all line up on the quad and they walk out 
up the hill through the pillars to signify them going out into the world with their new education. Ken, hi, Joette from Dominican. Um, we have, I'm going to go down a similar road. Um, we have an event called Fire in the Sky that we hold every September. It's pretty much family day here at Dominican. And again, it's a similar like festival type atmosphere. Um, we bring in food trucks, student activities is on campus. They'll bring in entertainment. Um, they'll have bouncy castles for younger kids that might come with families. Um, they'll have things like hypnotists, magicians, comedians um, throughout the day. And then the big event at night, um, we have a, a very large fireworks display. Um, even some local um, people who live in the surrounding area will come to watch that. So it's really an exciting event and it's a nice time for students and families to come together. And we do get a lot of local students at our school. So it's a nice time also to bring commuters and resident students together and everybody gets to celebrate family day together. So it's a really fun event. Uh, thank you so much to all of you uh, for taking the time to share that fun fact or tradition about your campus. And a big thank you uh, to our audience for joining us today as well. Uh, that is the time that we have. So a big thanks from all of us uh, and a big thank you to our college representatives for taking the time as well. A quick note that there'll be a very quick five question survey that will appear on your screen as soon as the session concludes. If you don't mind taking the extra few moments to fill that out for us, it's helpful to get feedback as we continue to plan events such as these moving forward. And just a reminder that this entire session was recorded. So if you need to return back to any of this information, you'll be able to view that recording uh, as soon as tomorrow at strivescan.com backslash CASDA NY. Uh, and so with that, uh, thank you all once again to our reps. Thank you to all of you for joining us. And I hope that everyone has a great rest of their evening.